Okay, got it. Okay, so we're calling the meeting to order at 3.06, um, adopting Sorry. the agenda as it was submitted. And there is no, is there any public comment? Seeing none. Um, um, let's do the minutes, get that out of the way. Um, any, any comments about the, the minutes for uh, May 28th? No. Nope. No. Uh, is there a motion to approve the minutes? So moved. Um, okay. George I'll seconded second. by Jeanette. All those in favor? <laughs> Aye. Mary Aye. Bill, Augie? Aye. Aye. All, all, all <laughs> unanimous. And there's another set of minutes, Mickey, too. There's um, April, April minutes. We didn't, we didn't we, um, approve them at the last meeting. Okay, so for the April, what day in April? It was April. <clears throat> Good question. Um, let me see. April 29th, Mickey. Okay, so is there any discussion about the April 29th minutes? No. Nope. no. Motion to approve the minutes by Georgia. Sure, I'll do that. <laughs> I'll second it. Seconded by Mary Beth. All those in favor? Aye. 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 And Augie's there. Is he saying aye? aye. He, he is. Okay. I don't know what he's doing, but yes. All right, he's so we're all in favor of that. Okay. Moving on to new business, we're gonna review the variance request for one Cambridge Street. And I'm gonna let Matt take it over from here. Okay, thank you, Mr. Chair. So <clears throat> I don't know if everyone's got the application in front of them. Oh, um, wait a minute, I'm sorry, Matt. Let me interrupt you. I need to read the-, um, the um... All this the, the written political stuff? Yes, okay, <laughs> this, is, this is Mickey Rowland, Chair of the Nantucket Commission on Disability permit me to confirm that all members and persons anticipated on the agenda are present and can hear me. Mary Beth? Uh, present. Augie? Present. Uh, Jeanette? Here. George, are you there? Oh, here. Right. Georgia? Yes, I'm here. Okay. And I'm here and Brenda, uh, staff member Brenda McDonough, are you here? I'm here. Yep. Okay. <laughs> okay. So this, this open meeting of Commission on Disabilities being conducted remotely pursuant to Chapter 20 of the Acts of 2021. For this meeting, um, the Commission on Disabilities meeting convening by video conference via Zoom app has posted on the town's website identifying how the public may join. Note this meeting is being recorded and each vote will be taken by roll call. Okay, thank you. <clears throat> Go ahead, Matt. Okay, thank you. <clears throat> um, do you uh, would you prefer I uh, shared my screen? Yes. Yeah. Yeah. <clears throat> I attended an HDC meeting uh, about a month ago and uh, I was physically at the meeting but then they asked if I could share my screen and I did and for like five seconds I had an email up regarding something uh, that wasn't meant for everybody it was regarding <laughs> some volunteer work I did and, uh, anyway somebody took a snapshot of it and put it all over the internet. Hmm. Oh, Thankfully, it wasn't anything embarrassing, but it's uh, you just got to be careful when you. Wow! Wow! Your screen, so. um, okay, so if everyone's, uh, I don't know if anyone's had a chance yeah. to kind of review the uh, application <laughs> request prior, uh, yeah. but this is um, for one Cambridge Street. Just to kind of get everyone's, uh, this used to be the old chocolate shop. I think it was called Sweet Inspirations. Yes. Okay. It was and the, the building itself is a uh, it's it's basically it's one building but if you look at it architecturally it looks like it's actually two buildings that are literally just kind of attached um, at the rear section uh, of the buildings one section is a, a brick historic structure it's uh, dates like mid 19th century I think it's like 1850 1860 that's this area here and then there's this wood frame structure that's attached to it uh, that faces onto India Street. Um, the scope of the work that we are proposing is to um, basically, you know, kind of open up the floor plan on the first floor, essentially demolish this wood frame section and rebuild it. Um, 
and rebuild it differently. Uh, we did receive HTC approval uh, for the this revision. As far as the brick structure is concerned, because it's a historic, really interesting, wonderful building, we're really not making any significant changes to it other than you know basically improvements, trying to uh, base uh, you know redo the historic details that have been, since been removed. You know, replacing the windows, <clears throat> adjusting the trim, repointing brick where we need to. So this brick section essentially is staying intact. We really didn't have the ability to um, alter it, nor did we ask to, just because I didn't think we'd ever. You know, we don't want to. Probably HTC wouldn't let us to do it anyway. So this portion of the building is staying intact. How um, old is the other portion that you're going to take down or change? Uh, you know, I think some portions of it dated to, you know, early 20th century, I would say, okay. but it had been added on to a number of times over the years. Yeah. So there okay. wasn't as much historic reverence for it. Yeah, that's uh, what I thought. It. Just wanted yeah. to check. Yeah. Okay. So the other complication or just, and this may not be relevant to your um, like purview per se, but just kind of give you the, the long and short of it too, is um, the, we did request a historic determination. Primarily, so this portion of the building, the brick section, did not have to comply with the floodplain. There is a small section of the property that is clipped by a, a flood zone, if you will. We just kind of creep into it, so it's not a high-risk flood zone at all. But because one portion of the property is clipped by it, we actually have to design this first floor, this section over here, which is fully uh, accessible. Um, it's actually technically the first finished floor will be below the floodplain. So um, we have to do waterproofing up to, I think it's just about like two feet total on this, uh, on this newer section. Now, the reason we got the historic determination wasn't for accessibility or anything like that. It was more about non-compliance uh, regarding the floodplain for this section of the building. Because it's historic, we, in order to retrofit it to make it essentially floodproof up to the floodplain elevation, we would have to do extension, extensive demolition, reworking, et cetera, et cetera. And uh, so there's provisions in the building code that says if we get uh, historic determination, uh, we, we don't have to uh, comply with the floodplain. So just to give you a little bit of background on that. But the reason I tell you that is, is that that was one of the things that we were really challenged by in terms of providing accessibility for this reframed uh, wood portion over here. Um, so the only thing that we're requesting is basically um, this existing doorway is, I think it's about seven inches. The threshold, this this entrance is not uh, accessible. Mm -hmm. uh, and it be, it's a pure function of the it building just being existing, historic, and um, you know, uh, not wanting to you know cut into it or drop it. And we didn't ask the HDC. So that's really the only thing that we're uh, asking for. The primary entrance uh, is accessible. Um, we're not even really required to have this uh, second means as long as our uh, occupant load is less than 50, which I think it would be, but it's an existing uh, entrance. So that <clears throat> I believe is all we are requesting uh, relief from. So this is the existing uh, footprint uh, or floor plan of the building. Again, here's the existing entrance. Uh, again, all of this section is uh, slated to be demolished. This is the new um, proposed uh, layout. And so this is intended to be uh, like a, a really intimate uh, small bar and then a small little bistro, if you will. Very, very small kitchen, as you can see. Um, but we're, you know, we're going to take full advantage of the, uh, you know, interior, you know, woodwork and framing in this section here. Um, so again, there's this is the existing entrance that is not being changed or moved. None of the fenestration on these two sides are uh, being altered. Uh, this is our accessible entrance. This is the you know primary entrance. I would say. I mean, if you're coming to the bar, you'll probably come through here. Uh, but this is the new section, and so this uh, is fully compliant. We have an accessible toilet, and um, the building elevation. So the finished floor elevation <clears throat> of this section of the building that we're rebuilding is lower um, than um, this section here. Uh, and I think that change is somewhere in the range of <clears throat> seven or eight inches. And so this was also something that we really struggled with, but um, so that there's full accessibility to the structure, to the entire, uh, to the bar area, it's via um, an internal uh, uh, ramp, uh, one in 12 ramp here. So here's your entry, <clears throat> bistro, uh, 
call this private function, but you know, kind of a smaller table, if you will, uh, accessible toilet, and then access into the to the bar area. Um, I think that that's pretty much. <clears throat> again, this is the existing. That's the new. Um, this is the accessible entrance. And so the whole function of being below the floodplain, we would have preferred to have leveled the floors, been above the floodplain, but we wouldn't have, there, there was no easy way to provide accessibility at public entrance. So um, that's what we did. Uh, there's an apartment above on the second floor, above this new section, that's an exterior stair, but it's just a single family uh, unit. So <clears throat> this is the existing brick entrance and you can see that it's, it's, you know, it's, it's probably less than seven inches here, actually. Um, we're very, very close, but that this is the non-accessible entrance. Um, the red indicates the areas of demolition. We're gonna replace the window sash, uh, do some window, uh, you know, rake, you know, detailing to make it more um, reflective of the original structure. There it is there. So that's the section here we're seeking relief from because <clears throat> um, it is gonna be a public entrance. So, in the interest of not babbling too much, I'll probably stop there, Mr. Chair. If you get, if there's any questions, then feel free to Matt. Fire could away. you could you just go back to that floor plan page with the green? Okay, so you you have two requests. Can you um can you just run through the the um the request number one and request number two, technically speaking, just so we know we're covering this properly? <clears throat> sure. Um, I'm trying to think what the uh, the other request was it was um mad um i actually yeah we requested 25.1 right and um yep. 20.11 um in for two means of egress gotcha but it says existing um exit door number two cannot be made accessible for reasons stated in request number one regarding section 25.1 Two means of egress are required from the restaurant per code based on the occupant load. Therefore, at least two accessible means of egress are required per 521 CMR section 20.11.1, okay? Right, so sorry. <clears throat> so the second means of egress is required. Actually, we did a, a version of this where, where it wasn't, so I apologize for that. So I, it is the second means of egress as well. Is there an apartment over any either of these buildings now? Excuse me? Is there an apartment over these buildings now, either one? Uh, yeah, <clears throat> there is. Uh, it's kind of a mixed use. This is the existing first floor. Yep. Um, thanks for that, Mickey <clears throat> um, and Brenda. Um, so this is, it's commercial really on this side of the building. Oddly enough, the right side of the building is an apartment. Uh, but then there are second floor spaces uh, you right. can see them here, but yes. they're honestly they're you have trouble standing up in these areas. So okay, so it's not necessarily on the second floor per se. Portions of it are most of it's on the first floor. Okay, thank you. Mm -hmm. So there's two your two requests. The first is because there's a step up to exit number two, which is this um, entrance or exit at the bottom of the page. And the second request is because you're required to have two accessible means of egress and you're really only providing one. Correct, yeah. Okay. All right, so just as just my initial take on the layout of this on this building is that you've got sort of isolated sections. You've got the bar on the lower side and you've got the kind of the restaurant space above. The main entrance is in the restaurant space above up onto uh, India Street. And the lower bar section, I. I assume that door will be used quite frequently as an entrance to the bar area, correct? Yeah, I would think so. I mean, it's it's kind of hard to imagine now because it's not a very active street, but um, if somebody wanted to go just to the bar, I could see them using that entrance. So yeah, I think it's gonna get it's gonna get used for sure. Is it I safe to say that you were gonna that the restaurant will sort of sell the front door as the primary entrance being on India Street and that will kind of be another entrance, but not like have the big sign up front, sort of walk in here, that kind of an entrance. Yeah, the the um, there'll probably be a sign um, on the bar side, uh, but the primary entrance, I'm just gonna get to the elevation. You know, we really designed the building to face um, uh, right. here. So this is really where we see, <clears throat> you know, it's gonna get the most exposure where, you know, 
the yeah. public entrance would be. Mm -hmm. Okay, and then back to that floor plan, if you could please move. So my only concern with this, I think this is, you know, I think you've done a nice job fitting this these spaces together and it's gonna be a nice, it'll be a nice function and use. Um, it's it's unfortunate that you can't get both entrances accessible, but I get it. It's it's um yeah. it would be a real challenge. My only concern would be going um, into the future. If for any reason in ten or fifteen or who knows how many years somebody said, "I don't have, I don't want to use this as one building. I want to use it as two separate spaces," and they start to isolate the two areas, then we've lost the accessible entrance to the lower bar area space. So. My only um, concern is that I would like to make the approval um, conditional that the, um, Brenda, I sent that something to you. Now I can't. Yeah. Um, yeah. I'll, well, I mean, I'll read Mickey. I got it here. Okay. Uh, just the interior of the proposed establishment shall not be divided into two separate uses in order to maintain accessibility throughout the entire space, period. It's pretty simple. Yeah, that, that makes sense. <clears throat> and they'd obviously have to lose the, uh, the accessible ramp, uh, but I think that that's totally fine. Yeah, and I don't, I can't imagine why you, there would be any concern from the owner's point of view. They clearly intend to use it as one space. Yeah. So yeah. Um, I don't see them selling. Everyone always says that, but that's totally fine. I think it makes sense. Yeah. All right. So I want to open it up to anybody else that has any comments or questions. Um, anybody out there? So is the floor going to be on India Street? Is that what I'm hearing? <clears throat> Where the, the, the on the little curvy kind of thing? Is the entrance? Uh, yeah, we'll be on India right here. Okay. <clears throat> Thank you. That's the that's the primary entrance. Okay. Anybody else have any thoughts, questions? Yeah, I have a question. Sure. Um, so, so would the voucher be able to fit like a uh, like a, like a like a big wheelchair like mine? It would. <clears throat> yep. Well, we uh, studied that and uh, one hundred percent. All right. It's a code compliant three thirty six inch front door, correct? Yeah, yes. All right. Yeah. And what is the width of the back door there, Matt? Do you know? You know, off the top of my head, I don't. I want to say it's, um, I could probably find that out, but um, uh, it'd probably take me a few minutes to find out. But I think it's it's definitely, uh, it's actually not, I want to say it's at least 210 and it might be uh, 3 0, but uh, sorry, but I don't have that information with me. Not sure that it's relevant, but, so that's okay. Brenda, do you have any comments? No, I don't. All right. I, I actually have a question. Do you, I mean, I don't know the answer. Do you have to have two points of um, accessible egress for like fire code or just one? You know, that's actually where I was, initially we were not gonna be over the 50. So the, the trigger for two means of egress uh, and the building is gonna be fire protected. It's gonna have a fire suppression system. <clears throat> um, and generally with, uh, if your occupant load is under 50, which a lot of the, uh, occupant studies that we had done were under 50. Um, so it would only require one, but, um, I do think they were required two at this point, but I think the second variance was specifically, uh, because it requires two accessible entrances hmm. or egress forms of egress. So the answer to the question is, I think, yes, that they both are required. Is there going to be signage on both doors at both doors? Uh, we haven't uh, applied to the sign advisory committee. Yeah. Um, I just wondered if they were going to be different, you know. I would think so. I mean, I think that the primary the, the primary signage would be uh, on the India Street side. Right. And we actually, um, the design of the facade of the building sort of keeps moving around here. But right. we anticipate the uh, name of the establishment to be just in the center section, this entablature. Right. Right. Uh, it's funny, the HTC review process, they asked us to, we had submitted photographs, historic photographs of parties 
hardware. And um, so this entablature is, uh, you know, it's, it's, uh, it emulates their, their detail and their signage was actually in this entablature. And so that's where our primary signage will be. Uh, but I would definitely say that on the back side, right. You know, we would probably have some kind of small, like some kind of hanging sign, I'm guessing. Right. Um, so, okay. but all of that is subject to the advisory, sign advisory committee. Could I see the inside again, the, uh, where the egress is, where they come in? Sure. The so I just want to show you this. So this brick side, so that I'm, I kind of yeah. envision some kind of small hanging sign right. over here. Right. Okay. That's the back, right? That was the back? Correct. Yeah. Okay. All right. So people are going to come in to a foyer mm -hmm. and then to, um, and so these two, the lounge and the private function areas are where people will go basically for the bistro kind of thing. Yeah. So if you're going to, if you're going to dine um, and it's not, you can see the size of the kitchen's pretty yeah. small. So it's going to be a fairly limited menu, but the right. overall intent or vibe uh, for the interior or the, the concept is, you know, the um, kind of like dark, you know, kind of warmer colors, um, right. really limited menu. Uh, but um, uh, so, yeah, if you come in, uh, we have a little bit of space here for a host and depending where they want to do, if they want to do like the sit down, it would be in here. And by the way, this, this, we call this private function. The yeah. truth is um, most restaurant tours prefer to have some kind of like a private um, yeah. quote, like a PDR, a private dining room, if yeah. you will. Uh, but I'd, I'd anticipate this will probably be most of the time filled with, uh, uh, you know, tables, but just offers the flexibility. Uh, but if they want to go to the bar, uh, they can go hang right. out at the bar. Go down um, the hall. Okay. So, yeah. and again, that's, that was a challenging part for us is to, in order to make this entrance accessible, right. it necessitated that we have an yeah. internal ramp which the ramp obviously, um, you know, eats up a good amount of space, but right. we kind of worked to work on this in a way where we, uh, it kind of serves double duty. It's like a hallway connecting the two structures, right. if you will, but it also yeah. provides us the accessibility for, for the entire uh, space. Right. Okay. Hey man, I do have a question about the accessible toilet room. Mm -hmm. The door, you know, there's the clearance to the pull side of the door and is that, that, that's fine the way it is there. I'm not sure it's in that sort of a little alcove or a recess, but normally you have 18 the inches, 12, 12, 12 inches. inches. Yeah. And I think, I think it might be on an automatic, I don't have to look at that, but uh, I know Josh, uh, Josh is away, but um, I know he's incredibly thorough. So um, it's his, uh, I don't know if So yeah, it's usually like a pull uh, area there, but um I can actually, and it's also, we've got actually a, a larger plan here too. So to answer your question, I'm fairly confident. Oh, here you go. Uh, seems oh. Automatic was, door uh, opener. Yeah, automatic door opener, yep. Okay. So. And that's on the plan, so that'll be part of the approval, right? Yeah, yeah. this is part of the submission. Mm -hmm. Good, yep, okay. Works for me. Um, I have one question going back to Mary Betts. I want to make sure I got this correct about um, does this building require two means of egress per the fire code? And Matt, are you saying yes, it did or no, it didn't? I wasn't sure how you answered that. Uh, I'm going to say yes. Okay. Because the accessibility part of it, it wouldn't, <clears throat> I think if only one was required, um, but I'm going to say yes. Okay. I'm going to suggest that we make sure that it has got what we want before uh -huh. we, I mean, we can vote contingent on finding out that, yes, it does have the questions answered by you, Brenda, and Mickey. Well, on the excess, on the egress? <clears throat> on whatever, Mickey just asked a question about something, and I thought that was very good, and I don't want to give an approval if it isn't going to be, uh -huh. you, know, in, you know, enacted. Yeah, Jeanette, I, I, I kind of agree. So I think I'm, what I'm going to do at this point is say that um, I'm going to, I'll phrase in a, 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 a sort of a, a vote for, for approval, conditional on um, two things. Um, the first being 
what I read earlier, the statement about the space not being separated in a, into different uses. And the second condition being that the accessible toilet room meet, which it says it meets middle meet 521 CMR um, to include an, you know, an automatic opening and closing device for the, for the door. I concur, thank you. That's the second condition. Mm -hmm. Okay. Um, the other question, Matt, which you may not be able to answer, but are they going to do music there, do you know or not? Because I'm thinking of, uh, what is it, the gaslight. They have so yeah. many people now that so you're saying 50 people, but right. I'm not really sure that that's going to be a limit. Well, <clears throat> um, there's a minimum. The occupancy calculation is a function of uh, the available square footage of the floor plan that's open to the public. And you can apply uh, a square foot, uh, an amount of square footage per occupant, depending on the intensity of the use. So for example, so to answer, your, I guess, the roundabout way of saying the space is so small, the fire code and the building code limit how many occupants you can have in this building. Um, and we were, I know that we were right on that like 50 mark, but I think that we've, uh, I think we've applied in a way that would allow us to go over 50, but there is definitely a cap. It wouldn't be much more than that. It could be it was more likely like 60 or something like that. And it's a function of these available areas that are open to the public. And basically it's either uh, five square feet, seven square feet or 15 square feet. Uh, 15 square feet is usually what's uh, per occupant is what's uh, used for seating uh, tables and uh, uh, chairs. Seven square feet is kind of like semi-flex space where you have the ability to move tables and chairs and sometimes it's going to be removed. Five square feet is if it's like standing room only, you know, chicken box kind of density, if you will. Um, we wouldn't, we rarely, if ever, apply a five square feet per occupant. Uh, we usually are the best, the most conservative to go like seven square feet. So given that, just with these square footage numbers, that we would never legally be allowed to have more than, um, like, like I said, it's probably over 50, but not more than 60. Your, your narrative, Matt, says um, use with a maximum occupant load of 60 persons. There you go. Yep. Answer one thing. Well, it sounds like, like when they built the gazebo and opened it up, they weren't thinking that they were going to have that many people. And now you can't barely get on the in that area with so many people. So uh -huh. my concern yeah. is that if we get overcrowded and and uh, have a fire or anything like that. So well, thank you. I, it's funny because we've done a lot of occupant uh, feasibility or occupant load studies for uh, restaurants going back when this issue had come up. And historically, Nantucket really, um, you're supposed to actually post the maximum maximum number of people in a in a public space. It's supposed to be publicly posted and, and it's an agreed upon number. Uh, probably like five, six years ago, we went through this whole thing. We did we did that for a lot of restaurants. Ironically, uh, the person who owns the gazebo had reached out to me recently because I think that the fire department has gone in and, and um, you know, they, they do checks with all these different restaurants. And now they are, most restaurants now are, they uh, do post how many occupants they're allowed to have. So they're, it's, it's something that's on everyone's radar. It's what the code uh, dictates. And there is basically a very kind of, uh, uh, specific limit in terms of how many people are allowed to be in that space. Thank you. Mm -hmm. Okay, so I'm going to just sort of rephrase what I said earlier, and then we'll take a vote on this. Um, I'll, I'll state it myself, and then I'll ask someone to make the um, motion, but this is to approve the um, variance, the two variance requests, one being got it from 25.1 and the other being 20.1 or 20.11.1. Um, you already know what those are about. We've discussed them in detail. So, and they're conditional on um, single use for the entire building and the accessible bathroom being um, supplied with a um, automatic door opener. So can I ask somebody to make, make that, that motion? Jeanette's making the motion. Seconded by I'll second it. I'm Mary Beth. All those Nick, in favor? is there a discussion on that? Can I, I just want to say something. You said um um it, that it's conditional with single use for the entire building, really the single use for the first level, correct? Well, thank you. Correct that. Yep, for the first level. Thank you. Thank you, Brenda. 
No problem. <laughs> um, all right, so motion's made. Seconded all those in favor. I'm gonna take a roll call here. Mary Beth? Aye. Augie? Aye. Jeanette? Aye. Georgia? Aye. And I'm in favor. So we're good. Thank all you, right. Matt. Thank you. Thank you, Matt. Thank you, Matt. Appreciate Matt. it. Matt, the, um, the um, variance request is going to be reviewed by the AAB on Monday. Is that correct? I believe so. I yeah, that's, that's, what, that's what Josh had said, okay, in yeah. his email. So I'll make sure that the letter goes out, like, first thing tomorrow morning. Um, or I'll get it out today, actually, okay? Okay, great. Yeah, Appreciate but, that. Yeah, no problem. Um, okay. Okay. Um, I can leave, but I was wondering if there's any, uh, I had some updated uh, information. Uh, I'm gonna stop sharing there. Um, regarding the Brant Hotel. And I don't, I don't know if this is the appropriate venue, but um, you know, we've kind of talked with them and come up with what we think is a feasible or a potential feasible strategy and uh, pathway forward. I don't know if that's something we want to discuss now, or if you want me to discuss it with like, Brenda and Mickey informally, um, really up to you. I don't want to put them at any any risk, but we we've, we've reviewed it. Like I said, we really weren't involved in the previous. Um, well, I guess we were, but we thought that they kind of had everything under control. Clearly, uh, they you know they didn't as it relates to the um, width of the doorways, um, and so they've asked us to take a more uh, active role in uh, strategizing about you know the phase two. Um, so I don't know if that's something we want to discuss now or really at your discretion. That, that's going to, are, are we going to see this again as another variance request? Yes. Do you have any idea when? Uh, well, I'd, I'd like to do it as soon as possible. That's why I've kind of really encouraged them to get a game plan together. Um, and, um, it's probably not going to be for, yeah. I'd say at least a month or more. And obviously a big part of this is your feedback and, and kind of getting everybody familiar with what we're trying to do and uh, and go from there. So you're really the first step. We They have not put any formal application together at this point. Uh, it's just, we had a round table meeting with myself, Josh, TJ, and um, from uh, Bergmeier. And um, we've made some suggestions to them, which I think is, um, you know, basically the, the general gist of it is, we're, we're trying to basically offer more accessibility um, to, to offset some of the portions of the structure that may not be compliant. But again, you, you tell me how you'd like to proceed. You know, to, I think because this is a, this, this has some history to it and it's, it's a pretty complex issue and I don't even remember the details. And I think it would take a while to bring everybody, including myself up to speed on what's going on mm -hmm. there. I think I'd sort of rather handle it um, unless anybody objects, I'd sort of rather handle it like we have in the past where you submit sort of preliminary information to Brenda and I, and we'll digest it and sort of either meet to review that or, or wait for the actual application. Um, okay. Unless anybody really wants to know more about it at this point. I thought the thing we were concerned about was the way the doors were opening uh, in the hotel or the, the the it was it was the door width. Um, basically, they they changed out the door uh, style and frames, and they weren't compliant doors. And right. so, the second they moved them, um, and uh, you know, they should have you know widened them, um, and they didn't. And in their mind, they thought that they didn't need to. I think we've determined that that was incorrect, uh, and so they've got. A number of doorways in what uh, build, uh, uh, we call them six and eight, building six and eight, uh, that are non compliant. Um, and they are uh, going to be building out or doing an addition to for uh, Dolphin Court, which is the building in the back. And that actually has um, an accessible unit in it. And um, so, anyway, so they're basically trying to figure out how to move forward to get a, a, a collective uh, approach. So um, that's a gen that's the general situation, if you will. So we've kind of made some suggestions 
you know, to them, we've got those on paper in the form of floor plans. And, but I, but I do agree with you, Mickey, it might be helpful just to kind of run through the full set and say, look at here's, here's where we are now. Uh, here's what we would, you know, what we are proposing. And, um, and like I said, I, I think that, uh, I don't know, I think it would be a net benefit. Um, but so you tell me, I could, I'd love to, uh, Matt, why don't you just send the plans to Brenda and I? We can distribute them if everybody's interested. But but I, but I kind of like to look through them first before just getting a kind of verbal description of them. Yeah, hundred percent. And if you want, I can because uh, it would be um, it might be helpful to kind of look at them uh, together. We could either do it as a, a Zoom. I don't know if, um, and I can also meet you in person too if that that helps. All right, I'm on the island for the month, so I can I could. Oh, meet cool. In if needed. All right. Let's let's get a meeting. That's right. right. A real meeting. While you're here. Yeah. Uh, you tell me I'm a, I'm around. This week was a little crazy, but uh um, but I I'll probably just uh, how about I email you both you and Brenda and we'll maybe I'll just throw out some times. But if there's any are there are times of the day that work better or worse for anybody. It's gonna be hit or miss. I think you just, okay. just, just throw something out and we'll see if we can do it. Okay. And ne next week work. Sure. Yeah, cool. I'm going to be gone Monday and Tuesday next week and coming back Wednesday morning. So other than that, Matt, I'm totally around the rest of the time, the rest of the month. So I'll, I'll target, if it's okay with both of you, I'll target from uh, Wednesday to Friday of next week. Sounds good. Great. Awesome. All right. Thank you. All right. Thank, Thank you, Matt. Matt. Thank you. Appreciate Thank it. You, Matt. Ciao. See ya. Yeah. Um, uh, is there any other business, Brenda? Do you want to, is there any updates you want to talk about? No, I guess... Um, was just like the galley, the um, the galley beach accessible parking spaces. Um, and then I think the pops went off very well. Um, did did anybody attend? I no. did. <laughs> so did, I, tell me, Augie, what did you think? Uh, I thought it was really good. Good. Did yeah. you use the transportation provided by um, the? The hospital, did you transport, You were you transported in a private vehicle? On our own vehicle. Okay, great. Did so, you sit yeah. in the section with um, the accessible um, platform? Yeah. How was that? Good. Good. Yeah. Was it well attended? Yeah, it was. Awesome. So Augie, I've got a question for you. So you or I assume Mary Beth, you were probably there too, but did, did you drive all the way up to the to the, um, I guess the boardwalk that leads to the platform where you sat? Well, well I wasn't there, but you go ahead. Yeah. Okay. I was there with my dad. Uh, everything was good, the ramp was fine. Okay, so he could drop you off or somebody could drop you off right there and then they had to go park their car. No, 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 we, uh, we parked that, I mean, we, we parked um, our, our van, there was a handicap spot provided yeah, like in somebody's like their private driveway. Thirty-five Halbert uh, Avenue. Private driveway, private driveway. So yeah, we just okay. walked down there. We just rode down there two jetties. All right. Awesome. Yeah, and I just went on the side of the street. That was fine. Perfect. Yeah. Good. Glad you could make it. Yeah. Um, That's what I did. All right. Anything else, uh, Brenda? We good? Have no other mm -hmm. updates. Nothing else. Quiet summer. <laughs> Okay. Uh, are you doing any permitting, uh, you know, renewals of uh, handicap stickers and pen, uh, whatever those are called? Yeah. So, um, so the way I've been doing it, and actually what we could do, and the way I've been doing it, Jeanette, um, since uh, since um, COVID, and we haven't been meeting in person, is that if I get a, um, a disabled parking permit application, I call Mickey and I call Georgia and I get the, their approval of the disabled parking permits. Okay. What I could do if it's close to a meeting time and I have them, what I could do since this is being recorded, I can stop the recording, then we can go into executive session. But we've been meeting infrequently and we right. did, I don't want someone to have to wait two months for a disabled parking permit, especially if it's a temporary, it doesn't matter. Just wouldn't want someone to have to wait right. that long, you know? So that's typically how I do it is um, I, get, I get both of their approvals. Good. Okay. Yeah. Right. George is always home. Mickey's always by the phone. <laughs> <laughs> Mickey's, Mickey picks up your calls, put it that way, you know? So it makes it to. easy for me. Right, Mickey? I try to. Yeah, you do. <laughs> if, he sees I, if he sees I'm calling, he picks up. 
course. <laughs> Absolutely. Augie's placard expires in December. Do I have to? I know what the state. You don't have to do like, anything, Mary Beth. Oh, good. that's great. Wait, You're good. What? We don't have to do anything. Again. Oh, but, oh. I love not doing anything. Okay, here we go. All right. <laughs> I can take, I can take <laughs> care of that one for you. Right. <laughs> I read the Massachusetts one. It just showed up. The Massachusetts one, too? Yeah. What about the Ontario one? It's going to show up. Both of them? Brenda's going to make it show up. All right. Both of them? We already got the Massachusetts one. Oh. <laughs> yeah. There you go. <laughs> did you find it? Did you get the ramp, Brenda? Oh no! I'm going to pick them up tomorrow. I'll pick it up tomorrow. I got. I got. And that's one thing I can say about um, uh, maybe a little bit of an update. The ramps have been so incredibly popular. I had to buy an extra ten foot nice. ramp in June oh. because all, I, that would that would make four ten foot ramps that we have because wow. they were all out. And even now, like. Um, People come to the island and they find out about it. I'm not, I don't know if they just Google it and they find out about us. I don't know exactly how. I know we, it's on our webpage and everything on the town website. You know what else? It's in the guidebook. It's in the guidebook. Someone yeah, left but, a guidebook at my house and I read it and it, it's yeah. in there that you have this and oh, that and the other. Yeah. But it, what happens is people that come this year, yeah. okay, now they're going to come back next year. You know, they're repeat oh. visitors. So oh. now they already know about the ramp. So the ramp is just even more popular. There was someone that called me on two spin drift and he said, his sister while I was coming in, I saw that you have the ramps. I went and ramped his house. Then Harvey Young calls me yesterday. He's having a person um, stay with him and they're in a wheelchair. And he saw the wheelchairs, he saw the ramps of two spin drift, and he went up to the house <laughs> and asked them about the ramps. And he said, Oh, all you have to do is call Brenda McDonough, she'll help you out. <laughs> so he, he gave him, so the guy, his name was Matt, gave um, Harvey Young my cell phone number. So Harvey called my cell phone, my home, work, emailed me, and <laughs> he wanted to make sure he got a hold of me. Oh, wow. <laughs> so he, I'm picking up all the ramps tomorrow. I get about four or five out there and I'm dropping some off to Harvey. But they how, how do you do that? Aren't they heavy? Yeah, they are. They are. Do you, you get help? help? Do you have somebody with you, Brenda? You know what? I can manage the, the 10 foot ramps are 65 pounds and I can manage with the dolly. I have it pretty down pretty well. It's really very I, I, it's it's great. So um yeah. And you get extra pay for that, right? Yeah, I do, Jeanette. Yeah, that's going to L O L. But I'm just gonna say, like we get we get so much positive feedback from those ramps, and we really do. And I always say it's a courtesy of the town of Nantucket and the Commission on Disability. Yeah, and um, they they just they said there's no place else that they ever visit or go to that has a service like this. So I just think it's a really good service. It's, it's, you. Been, it's been fantastic. My mother's a hundred, so wow. we were having you know getting her in and out of the house and places uh, it was. We had it at my house first, and then when she moved to her house, we moved it up there. So she was able to get in and out much easier. It was much better. Right. Yeah, great. Okay. Been fantastic. <clears throat> now we're planning for 101st birthday at this point because it keeps wow. on. Wow, 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 wow. Well, she's, it's not till February, but it took us six months last time. So <laughs> we'll have to see. <laughs> she's fine, actually. So good. That's great. Yep, it is. Princess Elizabeth, um, Queen Elizabeth. I know, yeah. I saw that. Yeah, yeah just I died. Did she die? Uh, yeah. Queen yes. Elizabeth died. Yeah. Yeah. I saw this morning that she wasn't, that everyone was right. Um, yeah. 70 years, they said uh, this is the only uh, <clears throat> queen or, you know, king or but that they've known for 70 years out in the country of England. She was, uh, of I think she was in 52 was when she was, I wanted to say ordained, but that's not what I meant. So, yeah. You know what I mean? <laughs> Crowned. Yeah. He was crowned. Yeah. yeah. That's I forgot the word, but anyway, yeah. I, I remember that seeing it on the TV. Everybody, I had somebody had so, tape. I saw it on a tape. Yeah. Yeah. Crazy. So, yep. Well, you know, she was 96. Not that that makes any difference because your mom hopefully is going to be 101. <laughs> I know. Who knows? Who knows? <laughs> you never know. She keeps so. saying, "Why am I still here?" I'm like, "I don't know." You're fine. <laughs> is so. she is she well? Yeah, well, you know, she's a hundred. She's wearing out parts, but you know, right. she's <laughs> actually. She has physical therapy and occupational therapy five days a week, and walks around. And she's got an enormous family who, you know, drop in and call on her, so she can't see very well. That's the big, really problem. 
it for is her. A yep. but she can't read anymore. So and that was big for her. So yeah. But she's fine. We're having a 75th birthday party for one of my sisters tonight. So oh, good. she's fine. It's fine. It's all fine. <laughs> Somebody said summer's over. I said, yeah, right. Sometime soon. Oh, and my son let me know at one o'clock that he's on a boat and he'll be here for dinner. Oh, good. Thanks. <laughs> you couldn't have told me this last night. But anyway, that's how it is. We can enjoy this media and still keep the, and I can stop recording and we can still. Keep <laughs> no, I'm done. I'm done. I'm done. I'm done. I'm done. I've got to figure out what I have to do. Before Don't get Danny gets here. Danny right, gets so, here. Somebody want to adjourn this meeting? Yes. Motion to adjourn. I uh, make that motion. No, I'll second it. Second it. All those in favor? Aye. 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 Okay, okay. Thanks, everybody. everybody. Enjoy have a great the rest September, of the everybody. Big summer. Thank Bye -bye. you. Bye. Bye. God bless.